Hi everyone, my name is Alexey Merkulov. I am a software developer in IntelliJ debugger team. And I see here so many people who love debugging routines. <laughs> so let's remember how it was in old days, just around one year ago. In that time, here's a simple example. Uh, just uh, main who launch uh, just one launch, and if we uh, paused on that breakpoint and try to make step over, it just finished the program. It uh, paused nowhere. Okay, you might say that uh, you may uh, set additional breakpoint and just resume program up to that. But what if you have 100 coroutines? You are staying now in coroutine with C number zero, and you want to uh, continue debugging with this particular coroutine. Uh, but if you set breakpoint on the println, uh, like, yeah, it was zero, then you press resume, and you will be in some random coroutine, in this example, just 24. So at that time, it was much painful to debug routines. It was almost impossible to make stepping over suspend functions. Using general breakpoints may stop in any coroutine. Conditional breakpoints may be hard to set because optimized out variables. Conditional breakpoints may be skipped for some reasons, and println was mostly the only option to debug coroutines in that time. And now, the same example, we are starting with coroutine C number zero, we press in step over, and it's C number zero, all works. So, thank you for your attention, let's proceed to questions. No, it's a joke, of course. I have something to tell you more. Okay, and so let's discuss how stepping works, uh, its workflow, assumptions and restrictions, and uh, coroutine stepping implementation. Uh, let's start from simple example without any coroutine. So we have just have main and several more functions with couple breakpoints. Okay, and in this case, uh, debugger work as you expected, that uh, we uh, firstly execute main, then it calls boo, uh, then we pause at breakpoint, when we press step over, it will execute function func, then pause again. If we press a step over again, it will start to execute bar, but my breakpoint here and uh, pause again. I hope a lot of you debugged programs and understand how it works. And uh, now uh, let's move to a several thread case. In this example, we have uh, function boo again, but it will be executed in the thread number one. And um, our default is that we will pause all threads. Like we, uh, when we met breakpoint, we pause both, actually all threads. When you press step over, we resume all threads. When uh, stepping is over, we again pause all threads, then just, for example, resume. And let's move to coroutine stepping. Uh, also, quite simple example, we have a launch with a couple of functions, and in the second one, we have a breakpoint. In coroutine case, we usually have workers, and there are special threads that execute uh, the library dispatch functions, and actually, when you send coroutines by launch, usually, uh, they will be assigned uh, to uh, some uh, dispatch thread and executed there until suspension point. Uh, for our example, we have, uh, for example, coroutine number one. It started, then it executed in the inside function hello, it suspended. After some time, we will resume it on another thread in this example. So continue our animation. And in some moment, we met our breakpoint in the function boo. And you wanted to make step over this function, uh, function func, but if we will do it, we need to um, remain in the same coroutine. To do it, first of all, we need to extract the coroutine ID uh, and make it as a filter, because uh, in JVM world, it's quite easy to extract the current thread and uh, stepping in the particular thread, but in coroutine case, uh, all the information is coming from coroutine library. So uh, when you press step over, we inject the execution of get coroutine uh, function, we extract the coroutine ID and we save it. Now all stepping will be performed only in coroutine ID uh, with number one. Then we perform stepping in JVM meaning of this word. And uh, after this, we need to understand 
uh, whether we go to suspend or uh, we just finish our stepping. If uh, we are not going to suspend, then we sh should show just user interface and say that stepping is over, you can continue your de debug your program. But uh, consider the case that we went to suspend. In, th in that situation, uh, we need to set a special breakpoint uh, to our function boom. And from this moment, uh, we are waiting until we met uh, function boo again, but in our routine. If it is another one, like some coroutine number four, it's not ours, we just skip it, continue to execute. Or again, some other coroutine, not ours, let's resume. And eventually, after some time, we will meet our point. Yeah, it's our coroutine, it's a resuming point. So we need to pause here. Yeah, the stepping is done. We uh, paused before the next function. Okay, so uh, let's summarize about coroutine stepping. The main characteristic of it is that it uh, remains within coroutine where I started. And we implemented for coroutine stepping step over, step out, smart step into, run to cursor, and a special case, smart step into launches. Uh, because uh, if you're debugging um, your program and you have some launch, likely you want to step into this particular instance of this launch. If you have uh, parallel code, um, this launch can be called from many places. And we implemented this feature. So in this example, we have uh, 100 launches. Uh, and uh, suppose we are staying with C number 42 in this iteration, and actually it works. So if, uh, yeah, it's CN42, if we press uh, step into launch, and then check what was C, it is 42. Uh, okay, let's move on. And another problem uh, which was solved quite, quite recently, it's optimized out variables. In old Kotlin versions, uh, you may uh, pause on the last uh, call and you will not see any local variables or parameters. Uh, if you try to relate something, likely you will have a message, this variable is inaccessible because it uh, isn't used after the last suspension point. But in recent uh, Kotlin versions, starting from uh, 2.2, uh, this problem is solved, so you need to fix your Gradle likely and uh, specify that you are using Kotlin uh, language and P11 uh, 2.2 or higher. Okay, uh, let's move on and let's consider async stack traces. Actually, it is example from uh, idea documentation by translated to Kotlin, and uh, this technique was implemented long ago. It's about that we can travel uh, not only our stack trace, but also can see uh, where our task was submitted. Like we can, uh, yeah, it's our stack trace of our task, but also uh, we can see how it was submitted it and what was uh, the stack trace uh, of submitting. And recently we implemented it for coroutines. So in this example, we uh, stopped in the uh, some coroutine and we can of course travel each stack trace, but also we can travel the parent a coroutine stack trace in, at the moment of launching. And uh, for example, here we can see that uh, it was way two because uh, it, it may also be way one uh, and travel also until the main. Um, in real programs, you can instigate quite big stack traces. Uh, also, these uh, two methods can be combined if you have some complex application, uh, you can uh, go a lot on async stack traces. For example, here we have uh, breakpoint in, in uh, coroutine. Then we can travel to parent coroutine. Then we can see that it was uh, running from run blocking. Then uh, that run blocking was from uh, task and the task was submitted from the main. And eventually we can go on until the main. Yeah. And let's move on from uh, debugging particular place to wall overview of our program. In some cases, you wanted to investigate all routines in your program. Uh, for example, to find some deadlock between routines, to investigate performance issues, like why the hell you have 1,000 routines in some case. Uh, 
uh, and uh, also maybe you want to find your precious coroutine to investigate what it is doing right now. Um, and we have a couple of tools. The first of uh, is uh, Coroutine View. Uh, it is a tree-like structure where you can investigate uh, children coroutine, go to parent coroutines, uh, and also you can uh, perform some search. So it's a nice idea to give uh, good names to your coroutines. There you will find them. Uh, coroutine view is hidden by default, but you can activate it uh, in this menu in the debugger tool window. Okay, and another uh, way uh, to investigate your coroutines we implemented quite recently. It's coroutine dump. Uh, we integrated it in the general thread dumps, and if you press this button, usually it's under the three dots, you, you can find it. Uh, you will receive all your classic threads dump and also coroutine uh, grouped by the same stack trace. Like in this example, um, we have 100 coroutines, but they are grouped just into three similar stack traces. And you can see how many coroutines are in this particular state. Okay, so let's summarize what we have for coroutine debugging. We have nice stepping, which preserves the current coroutine. We have async stack traces to investigate what was the state of parent coroutine when it uh, called. And also we have uh, coroutine view at thread dumps to investigate all coroutines in your pro um, program. Uh, in the end, I want just to uh, express some gratitude to uh, a lot of teams which were involved to the process of creating this stuff because we need from the compiler some stuff to adjust to debug routines. We need from uh, routine library to extract a lot of information and so on. So actually, that's it. Thank you for your attention. And we have three minutes. I don't know, can we ask questions or just... Should, should you go with micro or I can repeat? Yeah, it's... It's a nice question, uh, and actually we are working on that. Um, yeah, the question was, is it possible to trace uh, the flows and see where uh, value was emitted uh, from the um, uh, consuming point? And actually we are working on this case, um, and uh, we have a special um, um, fork of coroutine library inside IntelliJ IDEA and there it quite works. We have some issues still for, uh, and performance issues, so it's not yet in the upstream of coroutine library, but we hope the, it will be done. Anything else? Anyway, you can come after the talk and talk about coroutines debugging or anything else you want about debugging. <laughs> Okay.